Hello, dear colleagues. I'm happy to greet you today at our webinar. Today we are going to have a very interesting topic called uh, theme-based learning. And I hope you will get some inspiration and ideas for your work. Uh, while we are waiting for other people to join us, I've seen some people already wrote to me, uh, hello. So if you can hear me, if you can see me, please write something like yes and of course it's very interesting to find out where you are from so i i see here uh, natalia from kherson yulia from kiev chernivtsi nizhen odessa monasterishche busk obask I'm not very familiar with this place. Sorry. Kharkiv, Korostein, Zbarash, Zinkiv, Noisevka, Vravari, Great, Snishkiv. Malinivka, Mankivka, Marinka, Great, Ternofil, Novokrainka, Zoya from Kiev, Kherson, Zhashkiv, Odessa, Bar, Vinitska region, I heard about this place, Kordelivka, Kriverich, again Kiev. Hello. Um, so, dear colleagues, thank you very much for finding time and joining us today. Uh, we... My name is Diana Galavan. Uh, I'm an LT consultant for National Geographic Learning in Ukraine. I've had experience of teaching English for children of different age, for preschoolers, for primary schoolers, for teenagers, exam preparation, and uh, some um, adults also, like business English. I really like uh, what, I, uh, what I do, uh, teaching English, I mean. And uh, the main idea for the lessons, despite uh, the age of my students, is that I don't try to put English language itself uh, in the center. For me, it's more interesting to engage my learners through interesting topics and different uh, from another perspective. And they'll make an English a tool that helps learners to, um, to find out something more, to talk about um, to talk about different ideas uh, and of course uh, to create a need to use the language to use the, uh, the vocabulary to use um, grammar to speak correctly so everything is very uh, important but in the center i put inter some interest <clears throat> and then when i uh, found books from National Geographic Learning, it really helped me to do a lot, uh, to uh, not to be ready for the lessons for so, so, such a long time, because topics of the books themselves make it um, much easier to prepare the lesson. And of course, uh, Odessa sends the warmest greetings, Larissa, great. I hope you have nice weather because today in Kiev, in Kiev it's, it was freezing cold in the morning and now it's snowing, like December has come back. And so the warmest greetings, literally, is something that we all need today. Again, uh, so this is about the books that helped me to prepare the lessons that really Mm, help me to 
um, to do what I like to do in the English lessons much easier. National Geographic Learning, uh, this is a publishing house. Uh, for, they have their international website. You can find it, ELTNGL. They have great blog, lots of different webinars, uh, in some articles, useful ideas, and so on and so forth. And also for teachers in Ukraine, we have created our own Ukrainian site. Uh, you can see here the, uh, its name. Uh, this is Linguist and Gelcom UA. And you can um, visit it. Uh, there we have different things for, for, your, for you, for teachers. Uh, you can find our blog with articles and board games for secondary students. You can find the special uh, tab called online learning, where you can read some articles about how to organize learning, examples of lesson plans. Uh, with, if you use different um, books from National Geographic Learning, you know that they have uh, each book has own uh, learning platform, like microsite with video, with audio, and with teachers' resources. And we collect everything in uh, one uh, place that is called uh, Platforms for National Geographic Learning Courses. Uh, so if you somehow uh, missed and lost the address of the site, now you can just visit our site, open and uh, follow the link. Also, you may know that I've, uh, con I've done several uh, demo lessons for secondary students, and we collected all the recordings. Uh, and uh, here in this demo lesson <clears throat> page, you can find different uh, videos that you can watch with your students, or you can send your students um, and then check how was the lesson for them, or you can register to our new lesson. By the way, the next demo lesson is going to be on the 17th of March. So this is very, very soon, next Wednesday. So I welcome teachers and welcome students of the 10th and 11th grade. If there are some users from uh, who, um, teachers who use Wonderful World second edition books, uh, there are some different uh, additional uh, materials for, for you, like flashcards, uh, puppets, um, videos, <clears throat> vocabulary lists, and so on and so forth. And if you need uh, the access to it, you can follow the link, finish, uh, fill in the form, and then we will contact you. Let's start. So our plan for today. Uh, today we are going to talk about theme-based learning. Uh, we will have a very quick look of how it was uh, developed, what, um, how it, everything started, why teachers decided to use this uh, thing. We will talk about benefits and we will uh, look how to plan lessons if you want to make them theme-based. Before we start, uh, wow, I can see so many teachers saying hello to me. Great. Thank you very much. And before we start, let's have a very quick poll. Uh, to you, what is the main difficulty in teaching primary students? You need to choose only one. So try to find something that is the most challenging. Great, and now I see lots of uh, teachers who have chosen different uh, answers. By the way, uh, we have had webinars with practical ideas for each of the topic. So uh, you can visit our YouTube channel and Linguist and find the other recording of the webinar. And maybe you will find some ideas, what we suggest, how you can make teaching grammar, teaching writing or speaking with young learners easier. 
In each webinar, I try to share my own experience, uh, something that I've tried with my students. And um, that's why I think it can be, it, so I trust what, uh, what I share with you. And I know that what I'm talking about worked for me. So that could work for you as well. All right, so we can see that there are some like readers, uh, leaders <laughs> of our voting, uh, grammar and speaking. Also writing motivation, lots of people have chosen the same. Now we see that grammar and speaking really uh, the, uh, at the same level. Okay, Oksana wrote that she doesn't hear me from the phone. Check please your notes, uh, check please the sound or maybe log out and log in again. I'm not very sure that, uh, so uh, as far as I understand, lots of people hear me. So maybe the problem is uh, from uh, with the device. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, thoughts. We can see that uh, speaking grammar uh, are like the leaders so something that is really difficult for, for our students. I can understand. So it's very, uh, it's not very easy sometimes to make our students speak because um, they can't, they can answer very quickly like yes, no, and that's all, right? And they maybe, uh, there are no situations where they can use uh, speaking in, in uh, what is more, we don't even understand what type of speaking we, we want them to do. As it is, uh, how long should it be, right? What we want them to say and how we can tell them what we want to hear, right? Without just retelling the text. And grammar, of course, uh, our young learners are very, have uh, really different um, perception skills, right? Uh, they are at very different level from the secondary students. And for them, these grammar rules, they require some analytical skills which are not developed yet. And that's why they need something else. Uh, they need to not to teach grammar, but, but to use grammar. And today I think I will answer the questions, how we can do that. Thanks very much. I am going to close the poll. And, can, and let's proceed. So what is theme-based learning? According, uh, according to methodologists, theme-based uh, teaching or learning uh, is uh, the collection of different activities that are linked together by topic. We have the main theme uh, that runs through everything that happens in the classroom and acts as a connecting thread for pupils and teachers. So in the center of the lesson, or even of the lessons of the course, we don't put grammar or vocabulary topics. We put the theme. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and today we will have a look how to do that, how to plan the lessons like that, what can you do? If you look at the history of uh, theme-based learning, uh, it started long, long time ago, <laughs> actually, in uh, the, uh, the 60s, 1960s, uh, primary schools in Great Britain uh, had uh, th that problem. The teachers were all day long with their students. They studied all the lessons with all subjects with one teacher. And that was uh, the problem, how to motivate students, how to not, uh, let them not get tired from one teachers only, how to keep their interest, how to help them study and progress. And that's how uh, they started uh, connect everything that is going to happen within a day or probably within a week uh, to one topic. That was, for example, uh, people who help us. Yeah, that is one of the topic. And we can add everything there. 
we can uh, as, uh, study some jobs. We can interview people who work at school. We can divide uh, people like for gen dangerous job and um, on, on safe jobs. We can ask parents to come and to share about the job they do. We can investigate what people do in order to help us, uh, how they help us students at school or maybe on the way to school. Uh, and by doing this, so, and it was from different perspectives, not just from maybe language perspective, but also from geography, uh, from social studies, art, they can create some, they uh, created something, maybe it was cooking, and uh, math, uh, when they probably counted something, they were studying some sequencing ideas and something like that. But uh, everything that was um, during a definite period of time was not about um, separately math or geography or language <clears throat> arts. It was just bec um, about the topic. And by doing this, uh, it helped the children showed much better results in their uh, studying. Why? Uh, just because when we study um, when we study one topic from different perspectives, and when children do that, uh, it helps to build connections and to see how everything works. So what was not clear maybe in one lesson and one subject became clear with the help of another one. And this is actually how we uh, learn the world, how, how young children learn the world, because um, maybe even in the playground, it's not just maybe sport lesson, right? They can also communicate with uh, their peers. They can feel the nature and so on and so forth. So they use different sources to understand how how the, our world uh, works. The same happened in school. Uh, and by so this is not just clear explanations. Uh, these are just uh, make creating an interest. Uh, so it was for not for foreign language. It was for native language, just for studying as it is. And uh, but then this approach, like theme based learning, uh, it transferred or entered English as a foreign language. There, uh, teachers began to use other subject methods and activities on their English lessons. It could be some activities maybe from art when they needed to create something, some activities from math when they need to put the sequence of events, maybe like the sequence of numbers. There could be, uh, another one was use the content from other subjects just to teach them how to speak about different subjects in English. And of course, clear like content uh, and language integrated learning when the subject is learned with the help of another language. So everything came from that 1960s uh, primary teachers who decided to, who started this uh, movement, this approach of putting in the center, not the, um, some language issues, not some subject issues, but the theme, and then to look at the theme from different perspectives. Uh, we have also activity-based learning. Uh, what it means uh, that uh, we have one big theme, for example, it could be music, uh, it could be um, art, it could be um, computer uh, technology, and then all the activities uh, were from, so the children participated in different activities, but the topic of these activities was uh, the, uh, the one. When we study colors, we can study the name of the colors. We can study how we can mix colors, right? Uh, we can uh, describe uh, how we see colors, right? What, uh, co what natural colors are, what are our main 
colors, what are complementary, and so on. How we we can create something. How we can um, some maybe design questions, right? So we study this topic from different perspectives, and by doing this, it's much uh, more interesting than just talk about names of the colors as they are in the textbook. What about now? In Ukraine, we have this new Ukrainian school program, and uh, it says uh, that integration of subjects is one of the um, main ideas, main approaches that we need to follow, at least from time to time. And you can see that I put arrows for, for some ideas, like we can integrate similar subjects, uh, we can have module learning, uh, we can uh, organize some plays, uh, games, uh, some methods of game. We can uh, use um, act. We can help our students be active um, participants of the study. Not just listen and uh, follow instructions of the teachers, but be involved in the lesson and of course we need to show how what we um, what we study in the lesson is connected with the outside world and by the way if you um, have uh, followed uh, the facebook page national geographic learning if you have listened to my webinars you know that why not one of the the, the logo of our publishing house is that we bring the world into the classroom and to classroom to the life. And this is what are now uh, requ requirements from the educational pro program in Ukraine as well. How to, uh, how to plan theme-based learning? As I've told you before, we need to start from the topic. We don't need to think that, okay, today we need to study the names of the rooms. Uh, can we add this certificate to the course? Uh, Natalia, we, we are go you're going to receive the certificates with the uh, name of the webinar, with the date and with the number of hours. Uh, if uh, these certificates are recounted by your methodologies, but by your school, then yes. Uh, so it's better to ask uh, to have to get this certificate to show it and to um, consult your head teacher or maybe a methodologist. Uh, well, uh, so moving back to my to my topic, uh, planning theme based learning. So we start from the topic. Uh, we put the topic in the center, and. We, of course, with young children, with primary students, we need to do most of the job will be done by the teacher, but we, we need to start uh, involving teacher, children into the process of planning. We can ask them, we can give them some choices, we can uh, ask them questions, we can um, encourage them to ask, ask questions. By doing this, we, help, we will um, educate children who are active, who are willing to, to participate in something, who are motivated. Uh, simple, just simple question like, okay, and what about you? What do you like, like about this house? Or what other houses do you know? Or what you, do you want to know about the house? Everything that when you um, address to the children themselves, it will create more, in, more interest. And for them, it wouldn't be just like the, the picture that is not connected to the real world. For them, it would be something more meaningful because they talked about their personal experience. Uh, how to plan the, the theme-based learning? So I suggest we focus on one unit. So here we have one unit that is, that is called at home. Uh, for me, what worked for me, this is this mind map or spider diagram when we have the main topic in the center and then we have different approaches. So it really helps to come up with uh, lots of interesting ideas. Of course, uh, I ideally, like in, in the ideal world, uh, we, we don't have a look at our school book, at our like 
the grammar book um, and we can create everything we can uh, with other teachers from different subjects we can um, brainstorm lots of ideas what can be studied when we talk about houses uh, and uh, then uh, create something like really interesting projects or maybe a the works from the teachers but we don't have so much time usually and we need um we need to use what we already have and uh, maybe adapt adapt it a little bit so what i suggest we have decided with the topic so our topic is at home house like mm, we can look at the student book, at the content of our book, and we will see what vocabulary, grammar, maybe functions sometimes are going to be studied. Then we start, uh, so here we, we look at, at this content, but what is important, we don't only um, teach, think about the content. It's like, okay, lesson one, we will talk about uh, rooms in the house. Lesson two, we will talk about furniture. We will use the read the rhyme this lesson. Lesson three, we will talk about adjectives, how to describe my room. And probably we need uh, some, uh, to study some articles like eh, eh, and, oh, and that. <clears throat> we need to think like from the other perspective. Let's have a look what it means. In my, my word map, uh, mind map, I wrote in the center of the topic is house. Then I uh, put different, like I split one big topic into small topics, like parts of the house, furniture, clean house and unusual houses. These are only like the vectors, uh, only directions where what we are going to talk about during the topic because we can talk about more and more and more topics, but I don't have so much time, so I can cover only these topics. After that, I focus on the activities. When I say, uh, when I say activities, <clears throat> I think about the final outcome. For example, uh, why do we need to start parts of the house? not just to know parts of the house, not just to be able to call where you are now, but maybe to, to describe and to draw a plan of a house and tell about it. Furniture. We can talk about how to take care of my things. And here, by the way, we can uh, invite other teachers, maybe from... Uh, world around me or some of the me in the world subjects like that and they can continue what you have studied started in the lesson in english lesson they can continue talking about it on their another lesson but maybe using ukrainian language and then you can make a little connection and ask them okay you had this lesson me and the world with uh, Svetlana Anatolievna, do you remember how we need to take care of, of things, what we need to do? And by doing this, <clears throat> you build this connection that, okay, it's not just English lesson. Yeah, we were talking about this and different lesson as well. And now we have some knowledge and we can talk and now we will study how to talk about this in English. This will create this need and these connections uh, next, my room. Draw and tell about my dream room. It, it's, it will be like the final activity. Unusual houses. Probably we will talk about geography, where they, you can find unusual uh, houses. You can talk that uh, houses like igloo from the snow can't be found in Africa. <laughs> and why, right? For us, it's obvious, but for, for children, it could be the discovery of the world that, okay, near the equator, we don't have these uh, ice houses. Why not? Mm. Because of the climate. And then you can uh, add, um, invite another teacher, uh, maybe from the nature studies, who will, uh, <clears throat> who will talk about this with them. You can use modeling. <coughs> I'm sorry. Where students will 
describe houses using geometry um, shapes and then on their math lesson they can use again they will uh, create something they will talk about these uh, shapes and uh, they will make their houses and then they go back to your english lesson and you ask them okay in your math lesson you've created you've constructed houses from different shapes can you tell me about it how many circles does your house have how many uh, rectangles does it have and so on and so forth so by doing this you just create these um, small connections that help to build the whole picture and color and different subjects what else then we can ask our students like okay you can even make this mind map together with the students and uh, of course, with the second or first graders, it's not a good idea to write so, so much as I did. You just can maybe draw some pictures for them. Then you can ask, okay, what um, to draw a plan of a house? What also interesting? What do you want to know? Uh, house tours are very, room tours are very popular on the internet. So maybe they're interested of, uh, how to create a room tour uh, when the celebrity describes uh, how it lives. Maybe they want to look at some room tour. Maybe they want um, to see how they are famous, um, some famous people or famous um, characters live. Uh, they are interested in this. And you include this in your topic and you can cover it little by little really helps uh, to come up with some interesting ideas and make lesson outcomes more uh, interesting. Uh, what is an outcome? <clears throat> so we start from the first lesson, parts of the house. And we understand that we, by in this house, they need, in this lesson, they need to draw a plan of a house, tell about it, and your children told you that they are interested in the house tour. So the outcome would be to prepare this uh, house tour. Uh, how they can do it? They can take video, they can take photo of a house. You can prepare it. Mm, and even here in the book, by the way, uh, there are two children who are talking, telling about their room. Uh, like my sister and I are in our house, we are on the stairs near the windows, I've got a ball and she's got a teddy bear. So this is a nice example of this room tour. Now, children, can you make the same? Can you take a photo and tell about it? Using language, right? Uh, and they will, you will create a need for them to, to study these words, why they need to know the word stairs, why they need to know the word walls, and so on and so forth. You can give them the choice. And here in theme-based learning, it's very important uh, that you give children uh, some alternatives and they can choose what is in more interesting for them. They can, for example, create, uh, draw a picture, take a picture, it depends. They can use uh, their Lego blocks, build the house and tell about it, or maybe take a photo of it and tell about it. They can use modeling clay um, and make the house. Uh, you can even have it this project a bit longer. So uh, first you study uh, parts of the house here. So you've created just like an outline, a plan of the house. After that, uh, you study some furniture so they can add to the project. And then they will give you the result at the end of, of the circle. Uh, or for some of them, they are like technology smart and they will be, will be able to create the video project. And here, and then how to talk, how to tell about my house. It's not just the words, right? I need to sound correctly. And here you can use this grammar uh, that is quite naturally goes into this topic, describing there is, there are, or there isn't. And maybe while their presentation, they can ask each other, okay, is there a kitchen in your house or is there a garden near your house? Something like that. Uh, 
also we think what language we need right and here so uh, i i ran a bit forward so you uh, let's like recall first you come up with the topic then you think how you can what um, will be in this topic like these main branches then you think what activities you want and how you can combine these activities with other teachers after that you see uh, you think about the outcome so what you want to have the presentation what they need to do like to make it uh, to build it from lego blocks to make uh, modeling clay houses to make to have a video something like that and after that you think what language they will need and here is again the help of the book um, so they see the uh, this example of the room tour um, from the boy in exercise two and after that okay children do you want to have the same room tour of course yes we want let's uh, uh, let's look what he says let's uh, let's read the sentences uh, are these sentences like in exercise five are they can you use it when you talk tell about your room when you make your room tour of course now let's have a look at red words so you then you point their attention to these uh, grammar things and by the way this book uh, the examples are taken from wonderful world second edition and this book has also workbook and grammar book uh, to practice more. So Olga wrote how the children need to repeat different topical word combinations to remember them all the time. Of course, yes, that's right. So from activity to activity, you practice, you practice with it, you add some more, you practice it again, you practice it with grammar book, then in the oral speech, then you do something like exercise seven when they um, asking uh, and answering and after that, they finally ready to create this wonderful room tour and maybe even share it on some social network if you have social network with your primary students. Uh, what else? So what language do we need? Uh, here we can use, again, we can attract our children, we can uh, uh, engage them, and ask what they already know. Again, so, okay, to tell about your room, to make this room tour, uh, what words do you need? What words do you know? You can use the chart like uh, you see on the left of your screen, or you can uh, draw it just on the board. So what words do we know? Let's, and you write down, or you ask your children to write down. Okay, now you're going to make this room tour. What are the words you need? Maybe, you decided uh, you agreed with the, the teacher and they created this <clears throat> room uh, ideal plan of the room by the way to draw a plan of the room it's also a skill and it's not a very easy skill for primary students so they can do it on their maybe art lesson with their main teacher and then they come back to your lesson with this uh, lesson plan uh, with this plan now they you have like basis what they need to talk about then you ask them what do you know <clears throat> what do you need to tell about and after that finally they can very quickly write what interesting thing things they find found out uh, then you you say that uh, okay you can have room tour but also uh, you will it's not just for yourself, right? You're going to present your rooms to someone. And maybe other people who listen to you, they will ask you questions. Let's practice this. Let's practice it like in, you did it in, Lexis, in exercise seven. You can use the chart. Uh, again, if you use wonderful World Second Edition, or if you are planning to do this, we have lesson planners that give you an access to the teacher zone and in teacher zone you can find lots of different graphic organizers like i've presented to you so it was mind uh, mind map it was uh, uh, no want to know learned chart and this interview chart so they uh, prepare what questions they can ask maybe their peers okay what 
do you think everyone needs in their class in their house or something like that and then and they prepare these questions and when they present the houses they use these notes uh in order to interview the presenter and then they need to write down the answer so that is a great writing practice and and to write it they need the correct grammar that they have practiced before and this is everything makes sense so everything is connected and maybe then they can use these uh, notes go to the next lesson to to their art teacher for example and they can use these notes in order to add to their projects something like that also uh, we need so i've told about this that we need some uh, language like grammar language and you can use like this pie chart uh, just to practice it a bit more uh, before they do their room tour because this is like the final activity and they need to be ready for this activity they can use this circle you can uh, just use it uh, use this template or maybe you can draw it they can write they can recall some words from their previous lessons or they can um, plan in advance what they are going to make in their houses and draw four pieces of furniture in, in each part of the circle and after that uh, they can ask interview each other and by the way it could be a, a great visual help to complete exercise number seven so they are ready to ask questions they are ready to uh answer the questions they can plan they can go to another subject and uh, prepare these houses next let's look at so the next lesson you can see here is a text here are some um grammar what can be an outcome for this lesson and what other subjects you can uh, add? This is my question to you. So it would be really nice if you share some ideas with me. Thank you very much uh, for your feedback. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the lesson number two. It's not just about the furniture. Yeah, the furniture probably wasn't the first grade. Uh, and now they're talking about messy rooms. And here is art. Yeah, why not? Crafts, of course. You can, yes. Uh, so you just need to make friends with your art teacher and prepare these theme-based learning together. And here is a, a little text in exercise number two that explains you why you need uh, to keep your room tidy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is an outcome of the lesson? What activity would you like to see? <clears throat> what project maybe would you like to see? If they are talking about, if they have talked about messy rooms, uh what could it be dream room of course um i think the teacher the students now have this topic like uh health usnova zdorovia if i'm not mistaken health care thank you so you have read this text and then you, they go to their health care lesson and they study this topic with the teacher in Ukrainian, right? How to keep things clean, maybe. How often do you need to tidy your room? And then they come back to your lesson. And just because you have that conversation with the teacher, you know what to ask them. That, okay, teach uh, children, in your lesson, like healthcare, you've talked about how to keep your room clean. Let's read at the text. Uh, did you talk about this as well? What new ideas do you know? 
What other tips can you give to this girl? This girl is messy. Yeah? What is not? It's great to tidy her own room. Yes, that's right. And also describe your room, right? And here they have these phrases like my, your. So you can even um, role play this situation. Maybe something like uh, Marsha and three beers, like who has slept in my bed? Yeah, who has eaten from my plate and something like that. They don't really need to remember this have, who has, right? It's, it would be just like um, some phrases that will, they will remember. But they can use this my, your, maybe they can even role play situation, how to help this girl uh, to clean her room and to call out which <clears throat> things they have found like this. Uh, these are my shoes, this is your teddy bear, this is his, <clears throat> the um, toy box, yeah, or put or give some directions, like put your books on your bookshelf, or whose, um, whose socks are these, something like that. And of course, the song, and by the way, I suggest we all listen to the song, and decide what how we can use Six. it. Sing it. Sing it. Listen and Listen sing. And sing. <laughs> Is your bedroom messy? Is it really, really messy? Let's work to make it tidy. Yes, my bedroom is messy. It's really, really messy. Let's work to make it tidy. Toys on your floor. No, no, no. Books in your bed. No, no, no. Clothes on your bookshelf. No, no. Let's work to make it tidy. So, uh, in your comments, please write to me if you have heard the song, because I've never used audio. Six. Sing so it. it's very interesting for Listen me to find, to find out, actually. How do I, how do I stop it? Stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for your uh thank you for your ideas children compare whose room is a uh, nice song okay you hear it thanks so they can you can study this song and then maybe the next lesson on the healthcare less uh, subject when they um again talk about how to keep room clean you can suggest teacher to, again to use this song and uh, while maybe making some activities or just to recall this song, you can ask your music teacher to help <laughs> help to teach your st students to sing. If you like me, don't have very good uh, sense of hearing and singing at an English lesson for you is like um, funny thing, but not the art. Yeah, so you can invite some professionals to help you. Uh, also, maybe you can add some, uh, invite some math teachers and uh, they, it's the second grade, so they don't have such a difficult math program then, so you can ask them maybe to calculate something connected to this messy room, toys in the box or something like that, right? So they just can, so you can work all together like a team and create this lesson and then you, um, they, they, then they keep present maybe their material in your lesson, material that from math lesson in English lesson. So that's how we do it. Uh, because the lessons, each, each pupil can write about his or her room. The teacher keeps the copy books and reads the information about rooms. He doesn't say whose room is this. Great, who's, who's, uh, whose is the room? Children have to guess who's the room. Yes, it's his, it's whose. I've heard it. It's a pity I couldn't write it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, unfortunately. Um, nice song. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, this song is really nice and great. Make some act, revise vocabulary. Um, what else? Some ideas I, I heard here. I have read some great ideas. Revise prepositions. Yes, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dark. Uh, children can compare their own rooms who's is tidier. That's right. Can share their room photos and comments what they they had. I suggest a cleaning company. Yeah. Maybe they can help their like younger peers to clean the room. Explain. You can even prepare this um, project for the first graders. So this is example from the books of the second graders. Uh, so the, these are the children who have already an experience at school and they have their young peers from the first grade so they can create this project to them uh, and again so here you can use again this interview uh, sheet in order to ask something in order to compare the room maybe uh, you can't sleep well uh, with clothes on your bed is there clothes on your bed yeah so they can interview each other about the messy room and so on so forth. List of adjectives for room views, teacher show. Yes, great. Yes, you, and you add it. And it's very great when you have this one big topic, when you have the big A1 uh, poster somewhere and you add, you add these ideas like maybe on the stickers with your notes with different colors. So children really see it and they become engaged and they are in, they are interested. What can be added to this poster, so on and so forth. You can add these uh, adjectives, uh, then you can ask them to recall words from the last lesson. So you plan in advance that you don't write this lesson, these words right now, maybe new words from the lesson, but it will be the task for the next lesson or maybe for for another, in another subject to recall these words and to write them down instead of you. Great, thank you very much for becoming so active. And uh, here, uh, another topic was another direction was unusual houses. In the book, there are some examples. One of this how uh, the house from Austria, when you can practice some math here, you can invite math teacher <clears throat> to talk about different shapes or maybe craft teacher, art and craft teacher who can help them to use these shapes in order to prepare a, a nice beautiful house project. Um, you can talk about, uh, I've told you about that, remember about geography that you can ask as a teacher to discuss why, for example, in um, Africa, they have this type of houses. One in Australia, they have these types of houses. Why they don't have different houses? <clears throat> it's, it's really interesting and it really helps to see um, the studying from the different perspective. Even this boring topic as my house, as we, we all know it, but with these ideas, it becomes something unique, interesting. And with uh, and other students, it would be Something, in, something different because they can have totally different interests. Maybe they would like to talk about animal houses. And finally, the last one. Uh, here is a dialogue. Here are some more words about furniture. Uh, topic uh, reading and listening task is to listen and read the dialogue uh, when the family chooses the new house or they talk about the new house. Let's go and see. Yeah, so they just are looking for a new house to move. Uh, then some grammar like as, uh, uh, and is there. Uh, then they can practice some reading, like how to use, how to read words like rock, computer, how to read you in different sentences and writing. Mm, this is our living room. Now oh, here is an example. <clears throat> Let's write an advertisement. Yeah, it's not just uh, writing about room. It's an advertisement. <clears throat> uh, and also, um, you can ask some math. Maybe they can uh, talk about prices. They can calculate some prices if that is on the program. 
and they can do it in their native language, then they come back to you and they give tell you about some results. Uh, also, in the book, there is a project, by the way, some of you told me about that. And here you can see that it's the project that they need to prepare by themselves. And there are very clear and nice uh, stages of preparation. So first they describe the dining room with the words from the box. They answer the questions and after that they find, uh, they prepare their houses and then they come back to the classroom and share. So you can use it, uh, you can ask them to do this task beforehand and after that present it in the lesson. Uh, let's just have a very quick brainstorming. So thank you for being very creative for your ideas. They are like really, really very interesting. Let's imagine that we are going to plan the lesson on the topic on the farm. It's about domestic animals. You can see here some uh, vocabulary like form, uh, farm related words, uh, verbs connected to the um, gardening, like plant, dig, something like that. Then they have grammar, have got, has got, affirmative, negative questions, short answers. What projects, what different subjects can you um, integrate? What interesting projects and activities can you make? So don't think about vocabulary and grammar at first, but think about um, activities. What can be done within this topic? And what other subjects can you suggest? Let's brainstorm. So it, it is the last brainstorm for today. And I think that in very, very soon we are going to finish the webinar. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your, for your ideas, for your feedback. As far as I can see, lots of you are leaving the webinar. But anyway, create own form. Yeah. And what other um, teach, uh, teachers can we invite to this topic? Science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you can even plan visiting some farm, excursion to the farm. Yes, Katerina, that's, that's like we were on the same way. Um, uh, when will we get the recording of the session and also the certificate? By the, in the end of the last, uh, this um, webinar, I, I'm going to tell about this. The size, yeah, bigger, smaller, uh, role playing, of course, healthy living, yes, great. So, right, bed, mm -hmm. being away farm, my farm and animals on it. Of course, if, uh, and if the children are, um, live in villages, so they have grandmothers and they have these uh, farm animals, it's great. They can device, yeah, taking guests around the farm. Wow, how to tell about, yeah, how to tell about my farm to be the guests. How did you create a video maybe about the farm and something like that? Thank you very much. So all the uh, examples were taken from the Wonderful World second edition uh, textbook, Place Where They Stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, this is the course book for the teach uh, for primary students and for the pupils of the fifth and sixth grade. The book has the permission of Minister of Education. They, it can be used in the Ukrainian schools. We have the planning on our site. Uh, the components of the books are student book, workbook, and grammar book, which is uh, like very good combination to, to have a, a practice. The book is aimed, uh, um, it can, um, be adaptable to the program. So you can use it for your, if you have two hours a week, if you have three or more hours a week, you just, um, uh, uh, there is like a guide how to make it, how to, what you need to cover in each level if you have this or that amount of hours. Also together with the lesson planner, you have the, an access to the teacher zone with additional videos with um, uh, tests uh, with uh, those mind maps um, 
and uh, if you need you there is a classroom presentation tool so you can download it on your computer and present your book in the less uh, within the script uh, for teachers in ukraine we've created some useful <clears throat> additional things if you're already using a uh, national uh, Geographic learning books by the wonderful world. You can uh, fill in the form uh, and uh, we will give you the access. There you will get um, additional videos for grammar presentation and some additional cards uh, for first class, uh, for the first graders, like alphabet cards, puppets to role play, something, um, letters, um, cards with letters, cards with uh, words that like start from like from a for b for different letters so for, for your play is a sample you've used for the second grade students isn't it a bit complicated for them it depends on the students of the second grade mm. so this is a book uh, actually it is aimed on the for the specialized uh, schools so it, it uh, uh it has very strong beginning uh strong uh, first level so if you have covered the first level of the book then the second level won't be very difficult and also uh, it can be adapted because all the texts everything is uh, uh, has audio so they don't need to read by themselves they can listen and study how to read also as for grammar uh, the grammar um, in the way as we are talking today, the grammar is presented in the contest. So uh, content. So you don't in the context. So you don't need to use this to explain the rules. You work with examples, and then you use these examples to make similar sentences. And by the way, um, we have this um, YouTube list with all of the webinars, and there is a webinar on the topic of how to teach grammar with this course for primary students. Thank you very much for all your uh, kind words. It's uh, like a pleasure for me to read. Also, uh, visit our blog. Uh, we have different interesting articles um, and links for you. One of the, our latest articles is about critical think thinking for primary students. And there also you can find a download additional practice, additional ideas for the lesson, like lesson um, handouts for students and lesson plan. Uh, if you need some readers, if you are looking for interesting readers, we have this greatest series, Our World Readers. These are books from the first up to the, for the primary students, the books are divided into from different genres, like from uh, fairy tales, uh, you can find the uh, some science fiction, mm, you can find the uh, some legends, um, stories about the world, and also for each level, not for each book, but for each level, uh, one level uh, contains 10 books, so for the first grade there are 10 books, for the second grade there are 10 books, and for each level, so for each 10 books you have one DVD, where all these stories are told. So it's a very good deal and uh, you can use it <clears throat> to, to engage your students. And all the books have little um, set of exercises at the end, in the end. Any questions? I'm very sorry for um, taking you a bit longer. Mm -hmm. How to order and choose books and see the catalog and price? Uh, please, uh, Either you can leave your um, message in uh, the feedback form and we will contact you, or you can visit the site linguistngl.com.ua uh, where you can find the catalog, then you can uh, search the sample units, and there are books, there are buttons that help you to. Um, to, to purchase the book. Also, you will get the link uh, in the email. So, and now, very last and very important thing about the certificates. Uh, you will get the certificates if you complete feedback forms. Uh, how, it, how it happens? 
uh, in an hour, so now it's five o'clock, at six o'clock or something like that, you will get an email from the platform. It will be like, thank you email. And there in, in the end of the email, you can you will find the link like, certificate. It will be written in Ukrainian. So you need to press it. Uh, the new form opens. You fill in all the uh, required fields. You can also leave some feedback, like I want to find out more about books, please contact me. And then when you finish everything, in the end, you will get this link where you can... Uh, um, if you press the link, you will get the certificate, you download it, you type in your name, and then you can print it out or just save it on your, on your desktop. Uh, but please save the link because uh, we will close this feedback form in a week. That's how you can uh, and, uh, get the certificate. And as for the video, we have the YouTube channel Linguist you can find us uh, also, um, yeah, Linguist canal, uh, channel, and there we collect all webinars from National Geographic Learning in the playlist, National Geographic Learning, so you can see there all the previous webinars and the, um, this webinar as well, and all the future webinars will be added, of course. Now, again, I very quickly look at the, if there are some questions from you, Thank you very much for the kind feedback. That's uh, a pleasure for me to read everything. Mm. Thank you a lot. I like that you uh, like the ideas. Will we have the feedback in English? No, the feedback is in Ukrainian. Stay positive and good luck. Thank you for the webinar. Thank you very much for being active, for your for sharing your ideas, for participating, uh, for not being um, um, I forget the word um, for being active, for not being opposite of active. And uh, I wish you all a good weekend and uh, see you very very soon. Goodbye.